Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another historic deck, and as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, we're taking a look at a deck built around Solemnity, the three-man enchantment from Amonkhet Remastered that says players can get counters, and counters can be put on artifacts, creatures, enchantments, or lands. So there's a lot going on with Solemnity, but we've got two distinct combos that synergize with the three-man enchantment, and one of them is a Nine Lives, a three-man enchantment from M21 with Hexproof that says if a source would deal damage to you, prevent that damage and put an Incarnation Counter on Nine Lives, and then when there are nine or more Incarnation Counters on Nine Lives, we have to exile it, and when Nine Lives leaves the battlefield, we lose the game, so the goal is not to get nine counters on the Nine Lives, and of course, if we have both Nine Lives and Solemnity in play at the same time, Solemnity says that counters can be put on enchantments, which includes the Incarnation counters on Nine Lives, so we essentially get to prevent all damage that would be dealt to us, and a lot of decks in Historic simply can't beat this two-card combo, thinking of the Goblins deck or the Core Spirit Dancer Aura deck, they don't really have any way of interacting with our enchantments, and they rely on dealing damage to win the game, so they essentially have to concede to this two-card combo. But there are exceptions, some decks might have ways of bouncing or destroying the Solemnity, some decks might have Ugin the Spirit Dragon which can come down and use the minus 3 ability to get rid of our 9 lives and then we lose the game on the spot. Other decks might have ways of making us lose life instead of dealing damage and that does get around 9 lives since this specifically mentions damage that would be dealt to us, so life loss and damage are two separate things and that is very relevant in this case. So if they can make us lose life they can still potentially win the game. So there are a lot of exceptions where 9 lives and Solemnity aren't necessarily enough to win the game. I did build a version of this deck that was just about this two card combo and had some additional tutor effects to surge them up and was pretty consistent at doing so. But of course the problem is when we face decks that can somehow beat the combo then we might be in a bit of trouble. So instead we've got a different combo that can win us the game and that involves a Luminous Broodmoth, the 4 mana 3-4 mythic rare insect with flying that says whenever a creature we control without flying dies, return it to the battlefield under its owner's control with a flying counter on it, but if we also have Solemnity in play it prevents the flying counter from being placed on that creature, so with both in play at the same time any creature that dies will just come back without any additional flying counters on it, so if we have some sort of sacrifice outlet, thinking of Ghost Rider, plus maybe a way of draining the opponent whenever one of our creatures dies, like a Blood Artist or Cruel Celebrant, we could potentially win the game on the spot. But there's also another approach, and that is to just play a creature that automatically goes to the graveyard when we play it. So enter Uro, Titan of Nature's Wrath, the 3 mana 6-6 six, six, mythic rare legendary elder giant that when it enters a battlefield we have to sacrifice unless it escaped and when Uro enters a battlefield or attacks we can gain 3 life, draw a card and put a land card from our hand onto the battlefield. So if we play Uro from our hands with both Solemnity and Brute Moth in play at the same time we get to gain a 3, draw a card and put a land in play, then Uro goes to the graveyard and then it comes right back to the battlefield thanks to the Broodmoth's ability. Normally it would get a flying counter from the Broodmoth and then go to the graveyard without coming back, but with Solemnity, Uro will keep coming back from the graveyard over and over again, gaining us 3 life, drawing a card and putting a land in play with each iteration of this loop. The problem here is that we don't really have any way of stopping this loop, so this will keep going on until we draw our entire deck and then draw a card from an empty library and lose the game. So we do need an instant speed way of breaking up this combo, which is why we have two copies of Unsummon to return target creature to its owner's hand for just one blue mana. So this can bounce the Brute Moth or Uro if we're close to decking. And then our actual win condition is the two copies of Thassa's Oracle, which when it enters the battlefield checks our library size, and if we have more blue devotion than cards in library, we win the game on the spot. So we just keep going through the loop until we have one or two cards left, and then bounce our Uro or Broodmoth, doesn't matter which one, and then play the Oracle to win the game. And of course we will have the mana to play both Unsummon and Oracle, thanks to all the lands that Uro puts on the battlefield untapped, and of course since we're gaining a ton of life we can easily put shock lands on the battlefield untapped without having to worry. So yeah, that's the pretty straightforward 3 card combo or 5 card combo depending on how you look at it. 
Now we could also perform this combo with Croxa instead of with Uro, which would speed up the process significantly, because then instead of having to draw our entire deck, we can just deal 3 damage to the opponent repeatedly, which is usually a lot faster. But of course Uro does have more inherent synergy in this deck, since we're trying to assemble different combo pieces that can be pretty expensive to play, so both a ramp and card draw are useful, and we're also trying to stay alive long enough to perform the combo, so the life gain is also very useful, so Uro kind of just does it all. And then taking a look at the rest of our deck, at one mana we've got our two copies of Unsummon. We want to keep one copy to break up the combo, but we're fine to use the other one to just interact with the opponent early on. Then at two mana we've got a bit of ramp with both Growth Spiral and Explorer alongside 28 lands, so we've got plenty of lands to put in play with Explorer, Growth Spiral and Uro. This is the glue that holds the deck together, ensuring that we have enough mana to play out all our combo pieces, and of course a card draw attached to the ramp is also very useful. So this is a package that you'll find in a lot of my historic decks that try to play some pretty expensive cards, thinking of the Emil deck that we featured recently. And then we've got our two copies of Thassa's Oracle, just so we have a spare in case one of them gets thought seized. Then at three mana we've got our full playset of Uro, which also synergizes very nicely with cards like Grow Spiral and Explore, since those are cheap sorceries that will end up in the graveyard, and also synergizes nicely with our Fabled Passage, giving us more fuel for escape. And then we've got the full playset of Thirst for Meaning as a three mana instant that lets us draw three, and then we have to discard two cards unless we discard an enchantment card. And of course once we already have nine lives and solemnity we're happy to discard any additional copies to the Thirst for Meaning, and this will also help us assemble the different combo, and also puts more stuff in the graveyard for Uro. And then we've got our four copies of nine lives for solemnity, so no need for any idyllic tutors to search up our enchantments since we've got so much card draw and then the four copies of Luminous Broodmoth, and then we mentioned 28 lands, which I think is a bare minimum if you're going to play cards like Gross Parallel and Explore. So we've got two of each basic land to search up with our Fabled Passage, alongside our 12 Shock lands for Hallowed Fountain, for Temple Garden and for Breeding Pool, and then two of each Check land, Hinterland Harbor, Sunpetal Grove, and a Glacial Fortress. We do need both double white and also double blue and double green for the escape on Uro, so we do need a nice balance of the three colors. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw. Don't love the double Fabled Passage in terms of lands. I do have a lot of ramp, which is nice I guess, but don't really have any combo piece besides Uro. And the mana's kind of awkward, so let's take a mulligan. Alright, this is better. And then I'll probably bottom the unsummon, which is not as important. Alright, well, we've got all the combo pieces in hand here. Just gotta hit our land drops and hope our opponent can't interact in any meaningful way. Can fetch up an island. Opponent might be on a Field of the Dead deck. So there the main concern is something like an Ugin to wipe my board. I guess I'll still need double white as well, but there we go. Alright, so things are coming along nicely. Back up Solemnity. So either way I'm not going to be able to combo next turn, since if I want to play Broodmoth plus Uro in the same turn, that's 7 mana. If I play Broodmoth now, then Uro and Solemnity is 6 mana total. I think I lead with probably Solemnity, just because I have a backup in case I do have like a Maelstrom Pulse to destroy it. Gonna be Hieroglyphic Illumination drawing two cards. Thirst for Meaning can discard Solemnity. Yeah, I think I played a Brood Moth, hope they can't remove it, and then next turn we could win the game. And if they do have an answer for the Brood Moth, Thirst can go digging for a second copy. Cycles Shafet Monitor can search up a basic land or a desert. 
So they're probably playing with Hour of Promise to get two more lands, including deserts. Crows and Tusker also cycled. Who knows, maybe they've got a bit of a reanimation angle with all these big cycling creatures. Wouldn't surprise me. But our opponent does appear tapped out. And we've got a combo in hand, so... Even drew the nine lives for good measure. And then I just want to keep up as much blue mana as possible. Although it doesn't really matter here, since we're going to draw our entire deck. Now when going through the combo, I recommend going into the settings and then clicking on auto order triggered abilities so you don't have to click on the Uro triggers every time. And then we just need to keep an eye on our library size to make sure we don't end up decking. Now I have encountered an issue when going through the entire combo that sometimes the game thinks that you're going to end up in an infinite loop that would result in a draw. So it's possible that we need to break up the combo at some point and then restart just to make sure that the game doesn't end in a draw. 35 cards remaining. So we'll see if that warning message pops up again. And then once we do want to break up the combo, we'll need to go into full control so we can cast the unsummon. In the meantime, we're also gaining three life per iteration. So yeah, this is the downside of playing this deck, is that the actual combo takes a second. Although it does go pretty quickly if you turn off the triggered abilities stacking. Our opponent might be thinking that we're gonna just draw from an empty library here, so they're definitely justified in waiting to see what happens. But once this deck catches on, I'm sure most people will just concede once we get to this point. So we're definitely out ramping the Field of the Dead deck which is not something that happens every time. Although, to be honest, my opponent hasn't put any Field of the Deads in play yet, so who knows, maybe they're doing something else. We crossed the 100 life threshold here. We've drawn our Thassa's Oracles and Unsummons, so everything is in place. Haven't received the warning yet that the game would end in a draw, so that's good. Alright, we're just about ready here to go into full control. Eight cards left. Six cards left. Four cards left. How low can you go? We'll stop at two just to be safe. Alright. I'm in full control now. And I can now finally cast my unsummon. Bounce a brood moth.
One card remaining. Play Oracle. And win the game. I definitely appreciate my opponent letting me show off the combo here. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. And all we're missing is Luminous Broodmoth. Or a 9 lives, I guess. So yeah, this sounds good. And what do I fetch turn 1? Probably a Plains, because I need double white for Broodmoth. Although I could also get a blue source so I can play turn 2 Thassa's Oracle. Which is reasonable. Yeah, you know what? I guess turn 1 Elf. Maybe I'll want the Oracle as an early blocker. And it does also help me find one of the combo pieces potentially. Didn't think I want any of these. And then normally we would want to play Uro right away, but since we have Solemnity in hand, I'm gonna keep it in case we draw the Brood Moth to assemble the combo. Wild Growth Walker, so maybe a black green Bolas of Citadel deck. Well, as it turns out, Solemnity also has text against uh, Wild Growth Walker, prevents any counters from being placed on it. So that's a happy coincidence. Now they will still gain the life here if they do explore double veto. Well, not the best hit. So let's probably thirst. I guess I don't have to main phase the thirsts. So we'll just pass. Another elf, so we could see a citadel next turn. Another company. Also doesn't get a counter. but we still take the damage from the life gain. All right, let's see if we can find a Broodmoth here. We cannot, I do need to keep the Oracle in hand for the combo. So I guess I discard Forest and Harbor. Keep the Passage since that can potentially help me escape Uro. And then start with a gross peril. Finding a nine lives would also be fine here. Although Vito does say loses life instead of deals damage, so that still gets around a nine lives combo. Alright, let's fetch up basic forests. And then we'll play another gross peril in case I draw into an explorer. I can still play it here. And we sure did. Now hopefully I'm not dead to Vito giving everything a lifelink here. Which could definitely be the case. Let's see, I can block two. It would definitely be close, but our opponent just plays Citadel instead. Not a Wild Growth Walker on top. And the opponent's probably just gonna go off here, even with Solemnity preventing any counters. As Vito is just gonna drain us to death. Alright, GG's. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Don't love this hand. Double Solemnity and Oracle, which we don't really want in our opener. This is better. Bottom the Oracle. And then we can fetch up an Islands. Opponent on Sultai with the Jolrael on turn two. Well, we've got two of the combo pieces just missing Solemnity.
I should probably just play Broodmoth, although I could also go Explore plus Thirst. But if they don't have removal, then Broodmoth would stem the bleeding nicely. Yeah, let's just play the Moth. Could always decide to play Uro if the Broodmoth is in play, just to get essentially two triggers. But if we can hold it for the combo, that's even better. And then Explore. That's fine. And there's Solemnity. Alright, so we're very close to the combo. Can't quite do it this turn since we need to go Solemnity into Uro instead of Uro into Solemnity. So I kind of want to disguise the fact that we have this combo to an extent. So maybe I can go Explore plus Thirst and then I just need to hit an extra land drop and then next turn we can combo off. Although if they have a Thought Seize, maybe things get more complicated. And I should just play the Solemnity right now. They could also have Casualties of War, which would destroy my enchantments. I think I'm gonna hold it. So let's just explore. And then... Yeah, we'll probably take two so we can Thirst. And that should find me a land, which is enough for the combo next turn. Can't really block too much because of jor ability, which could turn them into 4 fours. So if I take it, I'm still taking 12, so that's not lethal. Would have been interesting if they attacked with jor because then they would have potentially presented lethal. Alright, hopefully they tap out and I get to combo off. There's a land I need, discard a Solemnity. And it's go time. Opponent is piecing together the combo here. I'll happily go through it. Alright, we're about to reach 100 life again. Six cards remaining. So it's almost time to go into full control. Alright, so let's unsummon. Draw our final card and play Oracle. And there we go, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a decent hand. Missing the Broodmoth for the Solemnity Broodmoth combo. And we're happy drawing a 9 lives as well. So far we've won two games with the Broodmoth combo, but we haven't really won any games yet with the 9 lives combo. Could also play Oracle, but I think we're just gonna explore. Alright, no land for this turn, that's too bad. Opponent with a Barkhide Troll. So maybe some sort of uh, pump spell deck. Or maybe an aura deck. Irresistible Prey, just to draw two cards. Alright. I'll play one Uro. 
Although Solemnity can also be effective against future Barkai trolls preventing the counter. Alright, so we're starting to hit our land drops now. Try and keep one Uro in hand for the combo. Joel Ryle. Seems to be a popular card today. Alright, so I can both explore and thirst. Or I can get the Solemnity out there and explore. Start with explore. Not sure if my opponent can beat Solemnity plus 9 lives. They might have a questing beast, which does also prevent the damage prevention from uh, 9 lives. So that card could potentially still beat us. And you might be wondering why we're not playing Wrath of God in this deck, since that would seem like a natural inclusion, pretty good against creature decks. And the reason we're not playing Wrath of God is because our Solemnity plus 9 lives already shuts down creature decks. And we've got uh, enough life gain with Uro that we can usually survive long enough against most creature decks. Solemnity preventing the counter from explore from Enter the Unknown. So lots of targeting effects. Zelfern Void, they might be playing the new 4 mana 3-3 three, three that draws a card whenever a creature blocks or fights. And yeah, Jorel puts us to 3 here. So I have to draw 9 lives here and Thirst gives me the best chance of doing so. If I play Thassa's Oracle, I get to see two cards instead of three, so... Alright, we found everything we needed. Nine lives to stay alive for an extra turn, and then next turn we can combo with Broodmoth and Uro. And even if they destroy Solemnity, we've got a backup and 9 lives should prevent us from dying this turn. Primal Might for 0, just to draw 2 cards. Draw three for one mana. Pretty efficient. This attack is not going to accomplish a whole lot. And it's time to go for the combo. They might have some instant speed removal. Guess we're about to find out. Could just be another copy of the, uh, what's it called, Aggressive Urge. Is your opponent finally going to do something? Invigorating Surge, which, because of Solemnity, doesn't place any counters. But now our opponent's finally tapped out, so they won't be holding priority any longer.
All right, so we can keep comboing in peace. And our opponent finally packs it in. All right, sweet. Well, we got both the nine lives combo just to survive one extra turn and then immediately followed by the Broodmoth combo. Although even if it was going to take us a few extra turns, it's possible that our opponent simply can beat the Solemnity combo and they definitely drew more cards than I did at that point, so they would have decked first. All right, on to the next one. All right, we're on the draw, facing a Numori deck. Could be a Goblins deck, that's all creatures. So the 9 life Solemnity combo can be a win against Goblins. Problem is, this hand doesn't have a ton of card selection, just a Thassa's Oracle to look at the top two cards. So it's definitely not a great hand, but I'll try it for science. And those look like goblins. At least the unsummon can maybe buy us one turn. Turn one prospector. So we just need to find Solemnity to lock up the game and drawing a thirst definitely helps. So do I shock myself here? What to drop would I bounce? Can maybe end of turn bounce a prospector? Yeah, I guess that's worth it. They've got another one. Just want to prevent an early Muxus from being cast. We'll play Oracle. Don't think I want any of these. Could keep the second thirst. So we've got more card draw after the first. Although I don't know if I'll have time to play both of them. Yeah, I'll just submit zero. And there's Goblin Chieftain. Can still block at least. And then I don't want to play the 9 lives right away, because we still have 15 life to work with. So instead we'll uh, pass with Thirst at the ready. And hope they don't have a Krenko. Goblin Matron, okay. So next turn we can see Muxus. So yeah, I don't have a lot of time here to find my missing combo piece. Gets a Wily Goblin instead. Gonna play the Wily Goblin sacking Matron. So they've got the one extra mana for next turn, I guess. Well, there's a Solemnity, so now I just need to play both enchantments before they kill me. Doesn't matter too much what I discard. So, probably playing the nine lives first and then hoping my opponent can make nine goblins next turn. And then next turn Solemnity should be game. So Muxus into Krenko could still kill me. And there's Muxus. Hope for no Krenko. I don't see a Krenko. Although they could have one in hand. Chump. Seven goblins deal damage to me. And do we win the game? Opponent has 44 cards versus my 45, so as long as I don't draw any extra cards, they would end up decking first. So I don't really have to do anything here. 
and I don't think the goblin deck has any way of making me lose life or destroy enchantments. So yeah, I mean, I could start playing stuff to work towards my combo, but there's no real reason to, since my opponent's gonna deck first. So I can just keep passing the turn indefinitely. Don't think they have any way of shuffling cards back into their deck. And if I do go for the combo, I potentially risk losing to a Gem Palm Incinerator, cycling at instant speed, killing my combo piece, and then I might end up decking first. So, I guess I'll play Backup Solemnity. Probably doesn't hurt. But yeah, I'm just gonna sit here until my opponent either concedes or draws a card from an empty library. And my opponent decides to take the easy option and concedes. Alright, so yeah, that's the combo against the creature deck. Kind of playing out as planned. So sometimes you don't even need the Broodmoth combo to win a game. So yeah, that was a close one against Goblins. If they hit a Krenko that turn with Muxus, they definitely would have killed me by going wide enough and putting 9 counters on 9 lives. But if we can get the 2 enchantments in play against Goblins, it's usually game over. Alright, sweet. So that's gonna do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.